Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And today I'd like to talk about the concept or the philosophical idea of nomina or in the singular nomenon. Now, as most of you might know, nomenon was a term that was coined by the philosopher Immanuel Kant. And it, it wasn't, Kant didn't really have any new ideas uh, to, to bring to the world. He, he built on the ideas of Plato. And in fact, I would go as far as saying that he wrote down and explained perhaps what Plato didn't explain so well. And, and what is that which Kant explained that wasn't written down very well by Plato and the Greek philosophers? Well, this is what I think. <clears throat> One has to uh, ask oneself, how is it that anything that exists came into existence? Um, because if it didn't come into existence, it must have always existed. Now, I happen to be a pretty smart guy, and I can tell you something. There is just no way I can imagine anything living or existing in past perpetuity. At least when I say living, I mean an animate object, uh, uh, an intelligence that has life okay in fact i can't imagine matter either because matter only came into existence a few million years ago so where did it come from um i can't understand how any intelligent being could have existed in past perpetuity so i asked myself many times uh in the past and i eventually came upon an answer is there anything that can exist in past perpetuity? And guess what? There is. Well, if it is something, it has to be inanimate, right? And it doesn't uh, have to be composed of anything in particular. It can't have, it doesn't need to have matter. It doesn't depend, doesn't depend on nourishment. It doesn't require anything. In fact, it's totally unconscious and, and it has no parts to it. It's, it's just there. Now, how, what, kind, what do you think I'm thinking about? Think about that for a moment. What am I thinking about? Well, if you're astute, you would have realized that I'm thinking about nomina. Yes. For example, pi, you know, that uh, magnitude that is realized when we attempt to measure the circumference of a circle with its diameter is a nomenon. It existed in past perpetuity as perfect knowledge and shall continue to exist in forever, in fact. There is no way that pi relies on anyone or anything or matter or requires life itself. So geometry of the ancient Greeks is also classified as nomina, okay? So the concept of a point, the concept of a line, of a circle, of any geometric object. Um, now, it's a bit problematic because when we talk about concept, we think about what comes out of the human mind, right? But these are self-existing concepts. And they don't, they can be realized by any mind, not just by the human mind. If there were aliens on other planets, then those aliens could realize these concepts. Isn't that so? I mean, think about it. If an alien on another planet had to uh, come across the concept of a circle, do you think that he or she would, or it, because we don't know if they have gender, would think about it in any way that is different to the way we think about it? 
I doubt it. How can they? Because the ratio of the circumference to the diameter is constant. So regardless of whatever circle they thought about in the way that a circle is imagined, that is um, a, sh a short distance, the same distance from a given center, a given point which is called the center, and lying in the same plane, okay? Otherwise, you could have innumerably many paths on a sphere, right? You could have, if a circle were just defined as the shortest distance from the center, then you could have many uh, circles, so to speak, but it has to be one that lies in the same plane. Okay, so didn't mean to go into that amount of detail, but a nomenon is something that exists independently. I think Kant used the words ding an sich, okay, which means a thing in itself, right? Um, in other words, we don't even have to think about it. It exists without us thinking about it. And always has, and shall continue, whether we're around or we're not around. So that is the only thing that I can imagine in my brilliant mind <laughs> that can exist forever. I can't imagine anything else. Uh, at the same time, I know that there must have been, uh, that there has to be intelligence which has been around forever. How? I have no clue. But it must be the case because I'm here and you're listening to me. And something had to put what you see here into motion. Now, I don't believe in a personal God and I don't have religion, by the way. So um, I'm not advocating that there's a God or anything like that, but I, I'm absolutely 100% convinced there are intelligent uh, beings, okay? One or more, I have no idea. And I'm sure we were created by them and the entire universe. For what purpose? I have no clue, and neither do you, and neither does your holy, your so-called holy books, your Talmud or your Bible or your whatever you want to call it. Those are all garbage. Now, um, nomina exist independently of the human mind or any other mind. And so... <clears throat> They have to be perfect knowledge because if aliens realize them and they're not perfect knowledge, then there could be a unicorn, which is something that you thought about in your mind. In other words, a myth, right? Um, in my article called, what does it mean to be, well to be a well-defined concept? I give you four guidelines to help you dis determine what is a nomenon, in fact, not just a well-defined concept because nomena are well-defined concepts. They are perfect knowledge. It's not the kind of knowledge that, for example, you'll find in mainstream calculus, where the morons who came before me made such a mess, okay? So um, the new calculus uses only sound analytic geometry. In other words, it's possible that aliens, and very likely if they exist on other planets, have realized a new calculus because it can't be realized in any other way. But the nonsense that you have in mainstream calculus with limits and epsilonics and all that rot, there's uh, no guarantee that they would have realized it because there is no such thing as a real number. That's myth, by the way. That's not part of, a, of the nomina, the, the realm of nomina. Rational numbers are part of the realm of nomina because they are perfect concepts. Okay, so it's very important to understand that perfect knowledge comes from the realm of nomina. And we do not invent things. We discover perfect knowledge. We do, we do, we do not invent that knowledge. We discover it. And it can, once it's discovered, we produce instances of it. So, for example, if 500 years ago, 
somebody thought about the construction of a jet plane in his mind, it's as good as if that jet plane existed. In fact, it has always existed because it's a well, well-formed concept. So future inventions have always existed. We just haven't realized them all. Does that make sense? Think about it. Think about it carefully. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about in this uh, YouTube video. I am busy trying to write a book. It's very difficult because my eyesight isn't good and I'm not in the best of health, but I'm trying to finish writing a book which will be available as an ebook. And I'll let you know once I've completed it on this channel. So I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.